Hi friends, I'm Sequoia and this is Sequoia Lynn Sews. For today's video, we're going to do a sew along where I will show you how to assemble the basic belt from the Georgian Ginger Tie Me Up pattern. This pattern has four belt options, all of them look completely different, as well as the dolman style dress I'm wearing today. The Tie Me Up is Georgian Ginger's feature pattern of the month which means it's on sale through the end of April for only $6.75. This pattern is sized through 5X, so it does have a really nice size range, but for the record, it is on George and Ginger's previous size chart. They have since extended their size chart, and they're definitely worth checking out if you're a plus size sewist. So, for today's video, we're gonna make the basic belt in which is the one I'm wearing. Um, I used fabric from Joann's and this is like a faux leather. I found it in the home deck department in the um, dot clearance section. So they had tons of colors, uh, quite a few different um, textures. So check them out if you're looking for something to make your belt with. Um, I was really happy with how easily this material, it's not really fabric, this material sewed. And I think you will be as well. So in addition to the four belts, you also get the dolman style dress, which is the one I'm wearing. I've made a few changes though. I lengthened the overall length about eight inches. Um, the design is meant to hit above your knees, but I prefer a little bit longer. I like to wear my dresses to work. So that to me is a little bit more of a comfort thing, but it would look great at the shortest length if you're into short dresses. Um, I would totally wear the short one over some leggings and be perfectly happy with it. In addition to changing the length, I added a neckband and sleeve bands because I wanted a little bit of a pop of color and just to kind of change it up a little bit so it's not the same dress in case I decide to make the regular one. Um, I'll have a little bit of variety in my closet. My fabric's an ITY that's been in my stash for so long. I'm not even sure where I got it from, so sorry I can't help you out with that. Um, but let's go ahead and check out our sew along video. I'm going to show you from the material already being cut all the way through the final assembly and then I'm going to do a reveal video. But first I want to let you know that if you like my content today, um, if you want to give me a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate that. Also I've included an affiliate link down in the description box for these four belts as well as the dress pattern and again it's on sale for $6.75 through the end of April so you just have a few more days. Um, I appreciate when people use my links simply because that gives me a little bit of income to pay for supplies such as all my fabrics, it helps me pay for my blog, and making my videos. So if you enjoy my content please consider using them. So no more delays, let's go ahead and check out the video. Um, leave me some comments below, let me know what you think, and let me know what else you want to see here. Um, thanks for visiting. The first step to assembling our belt after uh, putting our pieces together is to go ahead and make the long ties. So you, you use um, the tie pattern piece and go ahead and cut your fabric or faux leather, whatever you're using. And we need to fold this together to enclose the raw edges. So what I did was draw a line down the center of my pattern and that's where I want to fold my um, fold my fabric in towards the middle on both sides. Just meeting that line. This is kind of the same way you would make bias tape. Um, just so they're in the middle and then fold it onto itself and then just go ahead and clip it. Because um, most of these, probably most of the things you're gonna make your belt out of is gonna be something that will melt with your iron. I just found this a little bit easier. Though I did try to press my crease down the middle. So that's how I ended up, or that's why I ended up just going with drawing the line. Um, because pressing it was actually kind of melting my fabric. And so you're going to go all the way down your tie. And you can see I've already done this side. 
So that's a super easy way to do it and not have to worry about melting anything. So our next step will be um, stitching our lines down our tie, which you can see I've already done it on this piece. And now I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, I've finished clipping down the length of my entire strap, so I'm ready to do the top stitching. I've already set my machine up to do the um, stitching. I um, selected a heavy weight woven fabric setting on my machine, which will automatically adjust my tensions. I've also um, put on a plastic foot. You could use a Teflon foot. Um, and that just helps to eliminate the friction of a metal foot sliding along the um, faux leather or vinyl that you're using. Um, if you don't have the Teflon foot, you can always put a piece of scotch tape on the underside of your metal foot and that will help to eliminate the friction. So I'm just going to stitch it along. I'm using the inner edge of the toe of my foot to keep my stitching line straight. Obviously I've only used clips because I don't want any additional holes poked. Uh, as they will be visible, they won't close back up. And I'm just trying to keep my edges straight so my top stitching is straight. leather vinyl you're using it may benefit from just giving it a slight bit of pull in the back just to help it move along um, because this is pretty bulky for a regular home sewing machine So now I have finished both of my straps and they are ready. Um, we're just going to set them aside. The next step to putting our basic belt together is to clip both of our main belt pieces right sides together. I clipped all the way down the long edge. I um, mean, again, you never want to use pins because those holes will show um, due to them not closing back up like a regular uh, woven fabric. So I'm just going to stitch along the edge I'm using about I think this is a quarter inch seam allowance for this portion and just a regular straight stitch is fine here
Okay, now that we've finished that entire seam, you just open up your belt again. <clears throat> and our next step is to, we need to fold both of these pieces together. And we're gonna turn under both edges so there's no raw edges again. Um, and we're gonna stitch that together. So what I'm gonna do to make sure that's even is use my long quilting ruler to just draw a quarter inch um, guideline like a, for my seam allowance. I'm gonna do that on each side just so I can keep them even so that when I clip them together, I'll know that I'm within my seam allowance. And then they'll look just like this next to each other, but they'll be nice and even. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we will continue making our belt. Now that I have clipped my entire um, belt together, we're gonna go ahead and stitch along the top edge and the bottom edge. Um, one side will be to hold the seam or the raw edges inside and the other one will just be decorative top stitching. And we do that exactly like we did the ties. Um, just line your material up. To head under your presser foot, which is kind of the trickiest part really to get it started. Um, sometimes it's a little bit fiddly. And you just want to keep your um, pieces overlapped as straight as possible. So you kind of see what I'm doing to save you uh, the frustration of watching this entire process. I'm going to just go ahead and finish it and then I'll come back with putting on our end pieces. So to put this together, just lay one of your belt tie ends face down. Then we're going to sandwich our main belt portion between two of the belt ends. and just kind of get them as even as possible. I actually um, ended up trimming around the edges of my, the opposite end that I kind of sewed before filming just to make sure everything was gonna go okay. Um, and it worked out fine, so. And I'm giving it about a half an inch of overlap just so I'm sure that's really secure. And then for our belt ends, our belt straps, sorry, that get sandwiched up near the more narrow end of our um, belt end, the tie goes into the belt end. And again, just sandwich it in there and use clips, not pins. And this is a little bit fiddly, so you kind of have to make sure you get it all in there nicely. But as you can see, this is all that you need to do. So there we go. Now we're gonna stitch that in place using the same settings we've been using this entire time. So I wanna start, I'm actually gonna start right in between these to um, my two sets of clips. Oh 
And then as long as you have your machine set in a needle down position, you're able to pivot um, without losing your spot. If you don't have a needle down setting on your machine, you can always just use your hand crank to put your needle through um, your belt portions so that you don't lose your place, which will kind of look like your stitches kind of went off the guide a little bit. Um, and again, be mindful, you don't want to have to seam, seam rip anything in this process because you cannot get rid of the holes in fabrics like this. So I'm just kind of adjusting my belt to have the best sewing angle possible. Um, again, we want to try to keep it as flat as we can so that it looks nice and neat. And I think I'm kind of backwards. Typically you wouldn't want the um, main portion of your belt in the throat of your machine. You'd want it on the opposite side, but thankfully it's not a big project. Uh, it's just creating a few more wrinkles than I would actually like. But just slide it through. <laughs> kind of like giant snakes. <laughs> um, anytime you're turning it like that, you want to be careful that you're not putting pressure on your needle uh, because you definitely don't want to break a needle. So then when I've gotten to where I began, I'm just going to back stitch a time or two um, to make sure that's extra secure. Then we'll go ahead and clip our threads. And you can see that even though I was pretty careful lining things up, in some spots you can see the inside fabric through. So I'm just trimming those. I think that's fine. Um, I think if you weren't doing this with like a heavier fabric, like a... Um, faux leather or a vinyl, um, you could do, you could make these um, and flip them inside out. I think that would give you a little bit cleaner of a finish, but this fabric or this pattern doesn't direct you to do that. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to accurately sew and flip um, the vinyl or suede. Not suede, I don't know why I keep saying suede. Vinyl or faux leather. So there are ends. Here's a little bit of white, I wanna trim that. Um, so it just looks a little bit neater if you don't have white um, edges sticking out. So we've now finished our um, belt. And along with the belt of this pattern, like I mentioned before, there's a dress and I've sewn up the dress. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and show you my final product. Action. <laughs> I clatter.